Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna talk you through how I revamped this lovely dresser top unit uh, that now lives on my desk. So I start off by cleaning everything off just with a damp cloth from all of the cobwebs and dust that it came with when I got it. And then after I cleaned it off, I sanded it down using a 120 grit sandpaper that I just put on a sanding block just with my hands. Uh, I didn't think um, that getting the, the electric sander was, um, was of any need here uh, because there's a lot of sort of smaller parts to where, where I would struggle to get my electric sander in so I just used my hand it didn't take me that long at all and then I again uh, sucked up all of the dust with a hoover and wiped everything clean with a damp cloth as well before I proceeded with any um, kind of other decorating <laughs> later on. So after I was done with all of the prepping work, I then brought my unit inside and started getting everything ready for um, the application of my filler paste through stencil. So this is the stencil that I decided to use. I covered all of the uh, unnecessary parts that I didn't want on my unit uh, that wouldn't fit. I covered them with a masking tape and then I uh, adhered my uh, stencil to my unit with masking tape as well. Now the filler paste that I'm using to apply on through my stencils is just normal all-purpose filler that I uh, watered down with a little bit of water just to make it a little bit smoother than it was. It was a little bit grainy so I just added a little bit of water and mixed it really well so that it applies nicely and evenly and then I just literally just blob it on and smear it out with a palette knife so that the, um, the layer is relatively even. Again, I'm not very bothered about it being not like 100% um, even or, you know, there's been like little marks here and there because I'm going to be de-stressing this unit anyways. It's going to be a sort of shabby chic, <laughs> very shabby chic, almost grungy looking um, unit. So I wasn't really worried about it being too perfect. Then once I was happy with um, the amount of structure paste that I put on there, well, uh, filler paste. <laughs> I then cleaned up all of the little um, imperfections with a tiny little brush and then I do the exact same thing on both sides and the front of the unit. In between the applications I clean off my stencil with a damp cloth so I made sure to bring in a a bowl of water and I just clean my cloth in uh, in my bowl of water. I wipe everything off and then I wipe everything with a uh, dry cloth and my stencil is ready to be used again. Once I was done with my stencils and I let them dry for 24 hours, I then started to paint my unit. Uh, the paint that I used is by Annie Sloan, so this is chalk paint in duck egg blue colour. And I applied two coats of it, um, letting them dry overnight in between coats. So this is where the fun begins, the de-stressing part. For de-stressing this unit I used just black acrylic paint and a large flat acrylic brush. It's um, Ideally you would need a, a brush with natural bristles but I don't have any of those. Well I have one and I tried it but it just kept losing bristles. It just kept, it's not very good quality so it just kept losing bristles and they were getting stuck everywhere so I decided to just switch back to my normal acrylic brush. Um, but of course it would be ideal to use a natural bristle brush and so I literally just again use a dry brush method in which I put a little bit of paint onto my palette so my plate and then I lightly dip my paintbrush and then I wipe off any of the excess um, off of my paintbrush uh, pretty much to the point where it's basically dry and then I just kind of lightly 
um, dust it over uh, my unit and that way it just kind of creates these like this like dirt effect and then when you go over the stenciled parts obviously because the stenciled parts are a little bit more raised um, so you get a lot more paint um, on on the raised parts than you do um, like right underneath them and that way you kind of create that dimension look <music> Now we're moving on to my favorite part of this whole project using waxes to decorate so this wax that i'm using here is a uh, gold wax by pent art um, it's called antique paste but it's um it's wax basically and so i literally just dab my finger into the wax slightly and then i rub my finger all over the all of the edges and all of the uh plank the parts in between each plank of wood on the back of the unit and um, all of the 3D stencils that I've made. Um, literally just everything that I want to shine a little bit, I, um, I go ahead and I add my gold wax. The next wax that I'm applying is Art Alchemy Wax by Finnabar by Prima Marketing in the colour Peacock and I'm literally just dabbing it sort of here and there um, over the gold that I already applied. When it's mixed with gold it creates a really really nice sort of antique patina effect. It kind of looks green but also shiny, also kind of bluish, also still you can still see a little bit of gold. It's just very very um, pretty. The camera doesn't do it justice but I went ahead and just added it in a few spots here and there just to dim down the shine of, uh, of my sort of aged <laughs> unit a little bit because I felt like it was a bit too shiny for my liking. And then the next day I went ahead and started adding my gilding flakes on top of my unit. Uh, the idea was to just add it here and there as if somebody just went ahead and spilt some um, gold and copper <laughs> in a few places like it was just a little bit dipped here and there or you know there's, there, there's been some leakage <laughs> in places and so what I have here is gold flakes so it's not sheets um, is what most people use for gilding. I have flakes uh, which I had um, given to me by my uh, partner's grandma uh, she was into crafts of all sorts but she can't do them anymore so I ended up um, taking a lot of her stuff and I'm basically just using Mod Podge. Um, I apply a little bit of Mod Podge and then I go ahead and stick my little flakes on top of everything. Um, there's no particular sort of um, rhyme to how I'm applying them it's just sort of you know I'll stick a bit of gold here and then a bit of copper here and you know I just kind of um, do that. Now I did do this outside uh, for a little bit and I quickly realized that it's not the qu not the smartest idea <laughs> because um, it was pretty windy that day and so my flakes were kind of just floating all over the place so um, I finished it up in uh, inside and then also uh, to clean it off I just used a um, a harder brush, a clean harder brush and I just kind of, once it was all dry, I just kind of rub it all over the plate and then all of the uh, leftovers, all of the stuff that hasn't glued down, um, it just kind of naturally came off and then I just um, hoovered all of the, um, all of the mess up. Mm -hmm. 
And so moving on to the last two steps of this project, I have finally received my other two waxes that I had ordered. So one of them is this nice red color and the other one was um, a little bit pink. And I mainly applied this red color. And again, I just kind of, um, on my stencils, I went ahead and I applied um, the red wax sort of on all of the um, roses, on the roses themselves, not the leaves, and then some of the um, little swirly bits, and same with the other flowers that are um, on the sides. And then I just kind of went ahead and added um, a little bit of red here and there on the, uh, on the edges and all of the gaps in between the planks of wood on the back of the unit. So I just kind of, again, added it here and there in places just so that, so that it's not like screaming in your face red, but so that it's, it's still there and it just adds a little bit of color. It adds a little bit of, um, I don't know, I like it. <laughs> it adds, um, a little bit of character to it. It just kind of looks, um, you know, like been in an artist studio or something for a long time, which is um, a look that I really enjoy. <laughs> so yeah, so that is basically what I did. I just kind of, again, using my finger and as you can see, you really don't use up a lot of it at all. I literally just used any excess that was on the lid of the, um, of the little wax and I barely even touched that. Then the last thing that was left to do was to just seal everything using chalk paint wax. Again, this is um, chalk paint wax and this is clear by Annie Sloan. Um, I um, had bought this a long time ago when I did uh, my son's cot with Annie Sloan paint. And so I sealed his cot with uh, this wax because it's child safe. And so it makes sense for me to use it rather than let it sit. I left it for a couple of days uh, just to let the wax kind of seal a little bit, just to let everything dry properly. And that is it. And now it sits on my desk. And that is the end of the video, guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found this useful. Let me know what you would like to see me do next. Any project suggestions are very welcome. And subscribe if you want to see more. All of my social media links are in the description below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.